Mean energy of a harmonic oscillator. A harmonic oscillator has a mass and spring constant which are such that its classical angular frequency of oscillation is equal to omega. In a quantum mechanical description, such an oscillator is characterized by a set of discrete states having energies given by n plus one half h bar omega, where the quantum number n uh, labels these states with integral values 0, 1, 2, 3. A particular instance of a harmonic oscillator might, for example, be an atom vibrating about its equilibrium position in a solid. Suppose that such a harmonic oscillator is in thermal equilibrium with some heat reservoir at the absolute temperature T. To find the mean energy of this oscillator, proceed as follows. First, calculate the partition function of this oscillator using the definition of problem 4.18. Uh, to evaluate the sum, note that it's merely a geometric series. So let's do this calculation for the partition function. The partition function z is sum over all possible states uh, e to the minus beta e sub n and the energy levels are n plus one half h bar omega where omega is the angular frequency h bar is Planck's constant uh, divided by 2 pi and we have the quantum number n varies from 0 1 2 3 all the way up to infinity it can take values that are integers. Now, <clears throat> if I write the partition function by substituting this, these energy levels, I will obtain e to the minus beta n plus one half h bar omega. Uh, and if I take the uh, the part that doesn't contain an n term in it outside, which is e to the minus beta h bar omega divided by 2, then I have a summation remaining, which is e to the minus beta uh, n h bar omega. Now, if you let x is equal to e to the minus beta h bar omega, this is something that is uh, less than 1 uh, because h bar and omega and beta are positive. So you will have uh, for the partition function e to the minus beta h bar omega divided by 2. Uh, then we have the summation of uh, summation over n where n goes from uh, 0 to infinity, uh, an infinite sum, we have e to, uh, e to the minus beta h bar omega, so x to the n, where x is less than 1. So this summation, this is a geometric series. We already know what the answer is for a geometric series. Uh, this is for x less than 1. We have e to the minus beta h bar omega over 2 uh, divided by 1 minus x. So 1 over 1 minus x is the answer. So uh, uh, we can substitute for x e to the minus beta h bar omega. So for the final answer for the partition function, I can say that it is e to the minus beta h bar omega divided by 2, 1 minus e to the minus beta h bar omega, where beta is 1 over kt. In part B, apply the general relation of problem 4.18 to calculate the mean energy of the oscillator. Now, uh, I will need uh, the mean energy, which can be calculated as minus the derivative, partial derivative of natural logarithm of the partition function with respect to beta. So what is the 
a natural logarithm of the partition function? Well, it is um, the top term, which is minus beta h bar omega over 2, minus, because it's a division, the bottom uh, natural logarithm of 1 minus e to the minus beta h bar omega. Now, if I take the derivative of this with respect to beta, I would obtain minus h bar omega over 2. Then I have minus the derivative with respect to the variable inside or the function inside minus 1 over 1 minus e to the minus beta h bar omega. Now I have to take the derivative of inside with respect to uh, beta. So uh, this is going to give me um, Uh, the, because there is a minus sign and a minus beta h bar omega, it will give me a plus h bar omega e to the minus beta h bar omega. And uh, just to simplify things a bit here, I want to multiply top and bottom with e to the beta h bar omega uh, for this part. So the natural logarithm derivative with respect to beta of the partition function is then minus h bar uh, omega over uh, 2. Then I have minus h bar omega e to the minus beta h bar omega plus beta h bar omega. That's going to give me <coughs> a um, 1. And this divided by the bottom part, which will be <coughs> e to the beta h bar omega minus 1. So for the mean energy of the simple harmonic oscillator, I need a minus sign. So minus del ln z del beta. So the answer, therefore, is a plus h bar omega parentheses we have 1 over 2 plus h bar omega divided by e to the beta h bar omega minus 1. <clears throat> okay, so part C, make a qualitative sketch showing how the mean energy depends on the absolute temperature. Um, so uh, I can look at two limits for uh, kT much less than h bar omega, low temperature limit. Uh, what would happen to e to the h bar omega over kT or e to the beta h bar omega? Uh, this would be much greater than 1. So what would happen to E bar? Uh, it would be uh, H bar omega 1 over 2 plus. So for the term, uh, so this is a mistake here because I, I took it into H bar omega parentheses. This should be 1 here. Okay, so um, for E bar. Now, uh, if I look at the, uh, the term that is 1 over e to the beta h bar omega minus 1, since e to the beta h bar omega will be much greater than 1, that can be neglected. So I will have 1 over 2 plus e to the minus beta h bar omega in that limit. And for kT much greater than h bar omega in the high temperature uh, limit, what would happen? Now, e to the h bar omega over kT uh, minus 1 would be approximately, because you have h bar over kT much less than 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus h bar omega over kT minus 1. So these terms would disappear. So you would get, uh, for the mean energy, converging to h bar omega 1 over 2, uh, plus, so e to the h bar, beta h bar omega over k, uh, omega 
minus 1 I have replaced with h bar omega over kt so uh, kt over h bar omega is what I would get or I would get h bar omega over 2 plus kt and what I have done here is because in this limit e to the x for x uh, much less than 1 I can approximate this as 1 plus x that's Taylor's expansion the first two terms so that's what I have used to find the uh, the convergence okay so let's have a qualitative sketch of this uh, situation here I'm plotting e bar as a function of temperature so first I looked at the low temperature uh, limit and in the low temperature uh, limit I find that I have h bar omega 1 over 2 plus e to the minus beta h bar omega and at a very low temperature e to the minus beta h bar omega uh, will be um, basically much less than 1 over 2 so this would be uh, converging to in this limit so you can uh, neglect this term it would be converging to h bar omega over 2 so in the low temperature limit I have h bar omega over 2 which is basically the ground state energy so it makes sense because it was n plus 1 half h bar omega n equals 0 gives me h bar omega over 2 and in the high temperature limit I find that it is increasing uh, linearly with uh, temperature so um, then it's going to uh, start increasing um, so I will see that I will have a linear increase with uh, temperature at the high temperature limit so uh, the critical transition between uh, these two limits will be when the thermal energy is comparable to h bar omega okay so now uh, let's look at part d suppose the temperature is very small in the sense that kt is much less than h bar omega without any calculation whatever using only the energy levels of i what can you say about the value of e bar in this case does it agree with the limiting case well i actually made a comment about that uh, just now so uh, when kt is much less than h bar omega the system must be in its ground state so that's the low temperature limit must be in uh, its ground state ground state energy is uh, n equals to zero energy so energy for the ground state is zero plus one half h bar omega h bar omega over two so uh, indeed uh, this limit agrees with the limit obtained in part c so really the ground state energy is h bar omega over 2 and part e suppose the temperature is very high what then is the limiting value of the mean energy and how does it depend on t how does it depend on omega so uh, in part e If you have a uh, kt much greater than h bar omega uh, you will have um, the mean energy e bar that's what we found in part c h bar omega over 2 plus kt so it's linearly dependent on t and w so uh, now does that make uh, sense if you think about this uh, as the classical limits because when the temperature is very high 
uh, we have uh, the quantum nature of the uh, energy levels is becoming less significant. So let's put a remark here. So if I look at the classical limit, in the classical limit, what is the mean energy of a simple harmonic oscillator? The mean energy would be given by the mean value of 1 over 2 m omega square x, uh, which is uh, 1 over 2 kt. So remember, omega is square root k over m. So I'm replacing the spring constant with omega square m. And then I have 1 over 2 mv squared average value and this these two are equal to half a kt according to equipartition theorem so this is the answer is kt so when kt is much greater than h bar omega uh, you would have uh, the h bar omega becoming less significant so e bar which is h bar omega over 2 plus kt is approximately just kt so the h bar omega part uh, will be not so important okay so we're talking about uh, the quantum harmonic oscillator its energy levels are given by m plus one half parentheses h bar omega and goes from zero up to infinity integer values so we calculated the partition function uh, using the summation over all states e to the minus beta e n and using the geometric series we find the partition function uh, as e to the minus beta h bar omega over 2 1 over 1 minus e to the minus beta h bar omega now if we take the derivative of natural logarithm of the partition function with respect to beta with a minus sign we obtain e bar so that's what we did here and we obtained h bar omega 1 over 2 plus 1 over e to the beta h bar omega minus 1. Then I looked at the two limits uh, for kt much less than h bar omega. I should get the ground state energy h bar omega over 2. For kt uh, much greater than h bar omega, I should have a linear dependence on temperature. It's uh, basically uh, the slope should be k actually. So the transition between these two will be when I have the thermal energy comparable to h bar omega, basically. So uh, I have checked these two limits and I see that in part D, indeed n equals zero gives me the low temperature limit, h bar omega over two. And for the high temperature limit, I get h bar omega over two plus kt, linear dependence on temperature and omega. But since the temperature is too high, the omega dependence can be ignored, so it could be kt. And if I do a classical calculation using equipartition theorem, I find that indeed the mean energy should be kt in this uh, classical limit.